Nexus Mod Manager now has a feature to handle profiles. And the big question is, how does it compare to the profile feature in Mod Organizer? Which is best? And that is what I'm going to try and answer in this video. If you do not know what profiles are, you are probably going to have a hard time making sense of this video. And I would ask you to go off and watch one of my earlier videos on Mod Organizer, the fifth one, I believe where I discuss this subject and I actually show you how we use profiles and the massive advantages to doing so because profiles are a very, very powerful feature in the Mod Organizer tool. And I would actually suggest it's probably the most likely reason people make the leap from another mod management tool to Mod Organizer. But now that Nexus Mod Manager has a similar feature, people may be wondering which tool they should use. Now, the tools are different and there are still many other reasons to use each tool instead of the other. Advanced users are probably going to prefer Mod Organizer for several other features. Uh, but if your main concern is profiling and that's what you want to know, you want to know which of them is better at profiling, what you're going to have to do is understand the difference between the way these two tools handle that particular feature. If you have used Mod Organizer or watched my video, you know that that particular tool does not copy the mods into the data folder. So for example, this is my Skyrim Mod Organizer and I have a profile loaded up that has quite a lot of mods set up um, and many plugins. But when I go along to my Skyrim data folder, I only see the vanilla files. Those particular files are, are just not there. And, you know, they are completely invisible to me at this point. However, if I go up to the Mod Organizer folder and into Mods, I can actually see all of the files that have been installed in, in all of the profiles, actually. So, this is where the actual files are found. They're found somewhere else, not in the data folder. And when I run the game or a tool that requires those files, what Mod Organizer does is it creates this thing we call a virtual folder. This is technically um, incorrect. The, the description I'm giving you from a technical point of view is a terrible description, but it serves the purpose. If you think of it as creating a sort of a virtual folder that has all of these files that it needs, all of these plugins, all of the resources it needs, and it then presents that folder to the game and the game uses that folder. So it, it has what it sees is a, is a modded data folder, even though if you look inside with Explorer, you still only see vanilla files. Now this, this is very powerful. It has some advantages and it does have a couple of disadvantages. But Nexus Mod Manager does something similar but in a very different way. To show you the differences in the way Nexus Mod Manager handles profiles, I'm going to use the game Fallout New Vegas. But before I continue, I would just like to give a sort of a caveat, a warning here. I am not the developer of this tool and I have no inside information as to what is going on. Everything I am about to tell you is what I have observed, what I have seen from using the tool and is my best understanding. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I am pretty sure I'm right. But on the off chance that I've made a mistake, I will create a new video to replace this one. And if you know I have said something incorrect, please feel free to put a comment down below. As I said, this is my best understanding. Having said that, let's have a look at the Fallout New Vegas game as it is now modded with my Jack profile. As you can see, I've got a profile, I've got the Jack profile. I've also got a vanilla profile, which has zero mods installed and a test profile with also zero. Ignore that. This is my Jack profile with a lot of mods installed. And if I go along to my Fallout New Vegas data folder, you can actually see a huge number of files, many plugins, lots of folders, and it looks exactly as you would expect a Nexus mod managed fo uh, data folder to look. All of the files are in 
your data folder. And so you might be thinking, ah, so it does a completely different thing to a mod organizer. It does not use a virtual folder. And the answer is no, it kind of does the same thing, but it does it in a little bit of a different way. When I activated all of these mods, it installed them in a virtual install folder. Um, now, it, this is called virtual install. And as you can see here, I've made mine Fallout New Vegas virtual install, virtual install. This was just a small mistake on my part. It's a double folder. It makes no difference. It shouldn't actually read this. It should only have one folder. Pay no attention to that. But it installed all of the files into this virtual install file. It, it put them in a temporary place, much the same way that Mod Organizer does. Mod Organizer does the same thing and places them in its mods folder. So, so far, it's kind of similar. But any of the mods that have been activated for this profile also appear here in the data folder. And so your first thought might be, ah, so it just copies them across from here into here when you select a, a profile. And the answer is, no, the files you see in the data folder are the exact same files that you see in the virtual install folder. I do not mean they have been copied across. They are the same files. So let me find one. It's actually easier to show you a sort of a manual mod I made, which is an NVSE config, and it's installed in NVSE config and it contains a folder nvse and has one file nvse config.ini. And in the data folder, if I go to nvse, I will actually see nvse config. Let me just edit that. You can see it's got default heap initial alloc equals 400. And if I open that one, so is that. This is the one in the data folder. This is the one in the virtual install. Right, and, and as I said, you'd be tempted to think it's copied them across. But if I go along to the one that is in, let's, let's close that one. This is the one that is in the virtual install. So that is this file. And I go along and I add, let's just say, hello to the end of this and save it. I have now edited this file. If it was a copy, this file would not have changed. And yet if I open it, there you go. You can actually see I have edited, I, well, I was about to say I've edited both files, but I've not. I've edited one file and it just so happens that this is the same file regardless of where you find it. Now, technical people who understand how the file system works on Windows and in most operating systems will now understand exactly what has happened here and probably don't even need to watch the rest of the video. They probably can figure out how the profile system works. For the rest of us, this may seem confusing. How can this file appear in two folders and yet be the same file? It's it's pretty much how file systems work, and I am not even going to try and get into it. I could try and show you, but I think it would just bore the living hell out of most of you. And it's pretty much not required. If you're okay with the concept of Mod Organizer creating a virtual folder, a virtual data folder, just before it runs the game, you should be okay with the concept I'm about to throw at you, which is technically wrong like the virtual folder for Mod Organizer, but it will give you an idea of what is going on. Nexus Mod Manager has created a virtual data folder before it's running the game. Whereas with Mod Organizer, it doesn't create the virtual folder until I run the game through SKSE. It then, you know, creates the virtual folder and presents it to the game. Nexus Mod Manager has created the virtual folder and presented it not just to the game but to everything including the file explorer so this is very similar this data folder is very similar to the virtual folder that mod organizer has created it's just there all of the time even when nexus mod manager is closed i can close it it will still be there 
To try and show you this in a way that may be a little easier to understand, I've switched to my vanilla profile. That is a profile where if, if I check the data folder, it doesn't have any modded files. The, the data folder is now completely vanilla, as we want to call it. You can see from Nexus Mod Manager, it has a lot of little symbols that indicate all of these mods have been disabled. Not uninstalled, though. If I actually go along to the virtual install folder, where these were installed before, before I disabled the last profile, you can see they're still there. They are still installed. And in fact, each of these mods that has a uh, disabled symbol still has its files installed there on this in this particular folder. Now, I can tell you this folder is in on the same drive as my games data folder. This is something they do recommend. So it has not been removed from the drive, even though, as you can see, everything's been disabled. Oh, except one, my vanilla. Okay, my vanilla profile is not quite vanilla because I've been playing around with it, but you get the idea. As you can see, there are not a lot of mods. So now I'm going to actually look at the hard drive itself. This is the drive in question, my game's F drive. It has 467 gigabytes free. This is where you find all of these files and it's where you find the data folder. So, when, I mean, perhaps you don't believe me. I'll, I will actually show you. There you go. Computer F Steam and Computer F. So you see they're both on the F drive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-enable the Jack profile. It will take a little time. Ignore that warning. This is because I've been playing around with the profiles. It is beginning to set up, as you can see already. Has it already finished? No, I can't believe it's that quick. Um, it's beginning to set up all of the files needed for the modded game. You can see them appearing here. And in fact, the profile is already done. So we've now switched profiles. But if I go back to the, the map of my computer and look at the game's F drive, you can still see it's got 467 gigabytes free. We'll refresh it. I've used no more capacity, even though there are now, if you look at it, it would seem that there are almost 15 gigabytes of new files in this data folder. This, I can tell you now, 15 gigabytes of extra files, because that's what's here, have appeared in the data folder. And yet, as you can see, my capacity is unchanged. And that is because these files are the same as these files. They're not taking up any extra space when it creates this, what I am going to call virtual data folder from now on. So like I said, even though technically it's wrong, the easiest way to think of this is Mod Organizer creates a virtual data folder just before you start the game or the tool in question and supplies that virtual data folder to the game for the duration of the game. Whereas Nexus Mod Manager sets up this virtual data folder when you enable the profile and that virtual data folder is available to all of the tools and mods and whatever else, including your file browser, the instant you enable that profile in Nexus Mod Manager. But it's still not taking any more space. Those files are not copied into two places. They still only exist in one place. And if you want to think of it this way, in the virtual install folder. What you're seeing here is part of the virtual data folder. Okay, so I do apologize for how horrible that all sounds, how probably confusing it may even be, and also how technically wrong it is to anyone who is technically minded. But hopefully you've got some idea of how to think of the differences. You've got some idea of what is going on. The next question is going to be, so which is best? What are the pros and cons of both systems? And I'll try and list what I think are the pros and cons for both systems right now. 
The first pro that I would award to the Nexus Mod Manager is robustness and compatibility. The way Nexus Mod Manager handles things is going to be automatically compatible with every tool that edits a modded game, no matter what the game is. If, if Nexus Mod Manager is managing it, if any tools that you that you normally use on that modded games will be automatically compatible with this profile system because to those tools it doesn't even know a profiling system is being used it has no idea what is going on to all intents and purposes everything that you could possibly do to your modded game will be perfectly and utterly normal when you're using the nexus mod manager profile whereas many of you know the Mod Organizer profile system has caused a few minor issues uh, with regards to some tools. You obviously have to run the tools through Mod Organizer, whereas you don't have to do that with Nexus Mod Manager. Um, Mod Organizer did have some installation problems that had to be solved by the tools creator and some other mod authors and that type of thing. These are all problems that have been solved. But of course, there's always the possibility that new problems will occur for new games. Nexus Mod Manager does not have that problem. So obviously, this is a, a bit of a win for the Nexus Mod Manager. However, the downside to that, so a con that is related to it, is the fact that with Skyrim Mod Organizer, you could choose to not run the game through Skyrim Mod Organizer. You could literally just run Skyrim now without running Skyrim Mod Organizer first, and it would run the pure vanilla game. Well, it would actually run the ENB as well, but more or less an unmodded game. Whereas with my Fallout New Vegas one, because I don't have to run the game through Mod Organizer, uh, Nexus Mod Manager to get the profile, the profile's automatically available. Whenever I run the game, I have the profile. And in fact, the only way I can run a vanilla game is to switch to my vanilla profile so this this is this is the sort of thing if you run the vanilla game a lot if you run if you run that almost as much as the modded game this might be one of the things you want to take into account i would say that's not something that most people do most people probably run the modded game every time and so i wouldn't say this was a particularly big win for mod organizer a pro for mod organizer is the speed at which you switch profiles. The profile switching in the Mod Organizer is instant. I can switch and, well, I say instant. Half a second. Um, it, it really takes almost no time. It's not even worth discussing. Switching between profiles on Nexus Mod Manager can take anything between uh, 20 seconds. You saw it took about 20 seconds or something, up to a minute or so. And in fact, I suspect, depending on which profiles I was switching between, if it was two heavily modded profiles, it might even stretch to a couple of minutes to switch profiles. I haven't tested this thoroughly, but definitely up into maybe a minute to switch profiles. So if you like to switch profiles quickly and often if you're somebody who is really doing a lot of um, messing around and constantly changing profiles mod organizer is definitely going to be a lot easier to use if you're not as worried about that if you're if you've got say two profiles one for nexus uh, sorry for fallout new vegas and one for tale of two wastelands and you generally play one for a couple of weeks and then switch to the other or you, you want to have a profile, you're not going to play Jack anymore, you're going to start a new game, so you want a new profile, but you want to keep the Jack one for a rainy day, that's not going to be a problem. If, if you don't change profiles very often, that's not going to bother you too much. But if you are a rapid profile changer, Mod Organizer's probably going to win. Another pro for Nexus Mod Manager, I guess, would be startup speed. Because the game is handled identically to, to normal, when you start up, say, Fallout New Vegas with, the, with a modded profile from Nexus Mod Manager, it will run the normal speed, whereas with Mod Organizer, there are a few extra seconds whilst it's building the, uh, the virtual data folder. To be honest, that amount of time is pretty small for me. It could be more for you. I really don't notice that 
big a change in my startup time, maybe a couple of seconds, but honestly, it's pretty negligible. This is one of those ones where I'd almost say, yeah, technically it will be faster with Nexus Mod Manager to start your game, but you probably aren't going to care too much. One other plus point for Nexus Mod Manager is the fact that it pretty much adds this profiling to every single solitary game. It's compatible with every single game out there, and any game that the Nexus Mod Manager ends up being able to manage will have this feature, I believe, um, by default. So, of course, there are a lot more games you can manage with Nexus Mod Manager than, Sky than the Mod Organizer. And then there is the final uh, point to consider with regards profiles and it's a point that's not really relevant right now but might be in a couple of weeks and that is Nexus Mod Manager is supposed to be getting the option to publish your profile and obviously for you to download someone else's profile. This could be huge, this could be a massive step forward. We're going to find profile people who just create profiles that people can download and Nexus Mod Manager will then download all of the mods on that profile and it will activate them in the order they're supposed to be activated. And so you will get a new profile appear here in your drop down and a bunch of new mods and everything will have changed and you'll be able to try somebody else's profile and then think, oh, I didn't like that too much. I'm going to switch back to my Jack profile and it will work Perfectly. That's the idea. That's not in place yet. But if they get that working, and I can't see why they wouldn't, that is going to be pretty monumentally huge. Uh, you, you may not even have to download like a, a massive complete profile. You might find people releasing basic profiles. Here's, here's a basic profile that gives you um, 25 mods all working well together. And then you use that as a base to add a few more mods that you want for your own personal profile. It's not going to stop you from doing things like merge patches. You'll still need to do certain um, things where, for example, the, the FNIS animation mod, you'll still have to run those. So there will be some limitations to it. You will probably still, if you're a power user, have to install several mods manually yourself. But you may just be able to get a kind of like a hundred mod base profile installed and off it goes and the option to quickly try new profiles that other people have posted could well be well it could be a lot of fun for a start so that is another huge plus point for nexus mod manager will mod organizer be able to do the same thing i'm not sure but honestly i see no reason why they couldn't I, I can't imagine why Mod Organizer couldn't be programmed in such a way that it did the same thing and integrated with the Nexus site because it already does integrate in most, oh, in fact, all of the important ways. So that might also come to Mod Organizer as well. So there you go. But of course, this is only one feature we're discussing profiling. So you also have to take into account all of the other differences between these two tools and I'm not even going into that. Uh, Mod Organizer has a lot of extra features that power users would probably like. Many of you probably couldn't care less about them. This is this is pretty much down to personal preference. Some people are going to say, oh, this one is definitely better than this tool and they always forget to add the for me at the end of the sentence when they make these judgments. This is absolutely better in all ways if you are someone like me and requires those features, um, <laughs> there is there's, there is an element here of, well, what are you going to be using it for? What do you need from your modded game? And that's going to decide which tool is best for you. But I think that's about it for this video. I do apologize for the somewhat messy nature of the video and possibly the boring subject matter. It's not the most... Uh, entertaining thing to create but I do hope it's helped you understand uh, the differences between these tools again I do apologize to technically minded people who have been wincing in pain at my horrific descriptions of what is going on um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to give uh, an analogy that people 
can follow, please forgive me. I am going to leave you with a positive thought though, because we have reached a point in our modding culture, our modding community, whereby we are now discussing which of these amazing tools is best. These tools that uh, are just so much more than anything we had five years ago that, that allow us to do some incredible things and that have made modding not just easy, but pleasant and fun. I mean, many of us remember the good old days when, when modding was done manually and um, removing a mod uh, basically involved deleting your data folder and restoring a backup if you were sensible enough to make one. So we have come a long way and both of these tools are absolutely brilliant. And, you know, I just want to send a big thank you out to the developers of both tools. Uh, modding is what it is today because you guys have created these tools. So a big thank you and uh, a big thank you to everyone who has listened this far. I will see you on the next video. I am going to be creating a tutorial, uh, probably series for Nexus Mod Manager and you're more than welcome to join me for that. And until then, remember as always, you know the deal guys, have fun.